here in Burlington at Greenmount Cemetery. I'm taking a walk with my mom. Cemeteries are a great place to get some exercise and keep socially distanced. Today we're going to talk to some essential workers about what their lives are like during the pandemic. I'm very proud to be a part of the group of people who can go to work and do something about this. I think that's why a lot of us get into healthcare is we really do genuinely want to make a difference. Because I have been out in this neighborhood particularly for about nine years and I know a lot of people here and they all know me and we're friends. When I stopped working in science, people were like, oh, you're working at a grocery store? I'm like, no, I'm loving it. I love everything about it. And now people are like, oh my God, thank you. Hey, it's okay to feel weird because I feel weird too. What's essential about the work I do is that I'm out there documenting essential workers who are more essential than I am. As a newspaper, our mission is more critical right now than ever. During this time, I think it's especially important to make sure that healthcare is accessible because folks are losing their jobs and their healthcare coverage. It's a huge sense of pride um, and, and teamwork. It's like us against the world with this virus, holding, you know, arm in arm, and not just literally here, but a sense of solidarity with, with all of the essential workers across the country and across the globe, quite frankly. There's a unity there um, that is really powerful. What's your message to the people who are staying home? What should they be doing? They're doing exactly what they need to do, and they've done an amazing job at it. I don't think any of us are used to being told, do nothing, that's the best thing you can do, right? That doesn't really sit with a lot of us very well. But based on a lot of the modeling we've seen, they, the community at large has helped us manage this. Like, this is manageable. It's scary because it's new and a little unpredictable, and we don't know exactly what the future is going to look like. We know the virus is going to be with us for a long time and we're going to have to figure out how to work with it without being locked up all day long. But that initial concern for a massive surge of patients, our community did exactly and is continuing to do exactly what they need to do. The one thing I can say about the ER is we're definitely a group of people used to change. And so that's a good thing when it comes to an event like this because we've had to change everything. So work is a little unpredictable. You walk in with a plan for the day and then you are facing new challenges that you have to come up with new solutions for, as well as continue to take really good care of patients and also try to support your staff because this is heavy stuff. This can affect you and this can affect your family. It's really uh, psychologically challenging. You know, people's spouses have lost their jobs, their kids are home all day, and so they're trying to figure out how to be a healthcare worker and also be a teacher at home. We have this amazing group of people here who, <laughs> even behind their masks, I can see that they're smiling and leaning on each other and pulling together as a team. Honestly, when things get a little tough and dark and heavy, that's where I get my energy from, is watching what they're able to accomplish every day, despite what is getting thrown at them right now. I'm out here every day uh, doing the same job I've done for 14 years now. When this started, however many weeks ago, it was this abrupt change. You know, there were less people on the street, so there was less traffic. For me personally, it made me maybe a little more fearful. I'm gonna just sort of keep a diary of this experience because I am in a new, unique position. I mean, everybody's, you know, been really great about, you know, keeping their space and respecting you know, how we all handle this. You know, it's strange for me knowing that a lot of times I am smiling underneath this as I greet people, but I get a lot more, you know, waves through windows. Some cute kids and families who have left notes for me on mailboxes or signs out in front of their homes. I have always looked forward to going to work. And there was a day a couple weeks ago, I was driving to work and I was like, I just want to turn around. One of my favorite things about the job is families and getting to know kids. Now when we see families shopping together, we're like, why aren't one of you parents home and don't bring the kids shopping? It's hard because these are our friends. Our store specifically has done a really great job following CDC recommendations. We all look like ninjas now. Wearing this for eight hours a day, it's not easy. <laughs> You know, marked lines for six feet. People are being very respectful. We're very well stocked. We're getting shipments every day, twice a day. You know, we're getting through it. And most, mostly everybody is pretty great. You know, the housework goes to the wayside. I've, <laughs> I've been really tired. So there's times like I come home and I have all these things to cook things with. And instead I'm like, how about we have frozen pizza again? It's allowing yourself to not be okay. 
we deliver the newspapers to businesses all across northern Vermont. In fact, we're in over 1,200 locations during normal times. And as a result of the shutdown, the number of locations where we're able to distribute seven days has gone from over 1,200 to about 500. Not everybody has access to broadband internet or cable TV being a free news source. It's a critical element to a free and informed society to have the free flow of information. It's feeling like I'm contributing to something that people are actually finding benefits from and feeling positivity from, and it means a lot. I've always felt like being a photographer, someone who documents life as it happens, is really an important role, and especially in a time like this, it's so important for people to have information about what's happening in the world around them and to have good information, accurate information. Photographers have died from this virus, and I could be a carrier, and it's really important for me not to get people sick. Talking to people like this, and I've got gloves on, and I'm keeping back from them, it's really hard to establish that trust, that intimacy, that connection that allows me to do my job. Vermont is special and unique from other states in regards to healthcare coverage. Vermont does have their own exchange. Most of our staff are Vermonters themselves. I just want to make sure everyone's aware that we're offering that special en enrollment period for Vermonters that don't have any coverage. That's open for only a limited amount of time, and we have extended it till May 15th. I want to make sure people know that they can apply for Vermont Medicaid at any time and during this time where they're experiencing income changes and job losses, they may be eligible. We're working from home, but we're doing the best that we can to make sure we're providing the best service to our Vermonters. Mike, did you wash that windshield box? Business has been a little slow, and but we're trying to make ends meet. This is the only car we have today, baby. We don't have no work. Our customers we've known for years. I've been delivering papers for the seven days around 24 to 25 years. But today, believe me, I will not touch my face once. It's kind of stressful delivering right now. Um, I just wish more people would wear masks so you could protect each other. You know, it's a crazy situation because my girlfriend owns a nail salon and she had to close her place down too. And we haven't been seeing each other because I deliver and I work on cars, you know, to prevent the spread of the virus. So me and my son went fishing yesterday, but we both wore masks. We have different families because he lives with his mom and me. So I don't want to get them sick and they don't want to, you know what I mean? Hi. I did a story on, the, on Generator who made these face shields. I don't know if you've come into contact. Have you seen them? Yes, seen them we just there? got them. Yes. And so these new ones that came in can wipe down every single aspect. It's a much more sturdy shield. And uh, so far the staff love it. I think it's also really cool that it was made locally. There's a, also that sense of Vermont pride. Because people are like, How can, what can we do? How can we help you? What can yeah. we do? Know that we are doing everything that the CDC recommends. I've had people offer me gloves and I'm like, gloves aren't recommended. Don't come in for three things. Don't come in with all your roommates. Make your list. Make sure you're touching things only that you're buying. It's not the time to squeeze all the avocados. Just be kind, be understanding, give space. <laughs> And the positive spin on an otherwise really unfortunate situation with this um, pandemic has been the community support. We've never been so well fed. <laughs> Stay positive and we can all relate. We're all in the same club right now. We will get through this. We are getting through this. People are being kind to each other, finding ways to be of service. We're looking out for our customers, but our customers are also looking out for each other. I think Vermont has really stepped up and done exactly what, what we all needed. I want to reassure people not to be scared. I know that's easier said than done. Don't be scared. We're still here to take care of everybody who needs to be cared for, uh, COVID or not. So things will look different, but this is, this is something we can get through. We'll figure out what the new normal is together. Thank you to all the essential workers for everything you're doing and to everybody at home. Stay safe, be smart, take care. We're gonna get through this. And we chatted for a bit and now there's a dog behind me. <laughs> Hi, Max. Well, Max, apparently there's a squirrel. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> at least you didn't do that during the interview. This is very well timed.